What's up guys? I'll show you this cool new tutorial. I uh, had some spare time, just want to show you how to add bullet casing effects that fly out of the gun like this. Looks really cool, adds a nice little effect to the game. And yeah, let's hop right into it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to come down to the weapons folder and open up the weapon info struct here. And at the top, you want to click this button for new variable. And scroll all the way to the bottom and then name it. I named mine bullet casing effects and then I set the variable type to a particle system. Now that you got that, you need to go into your weapon info table here. Double click it. This is where all your weapons are. Click on, we'll do the start and rifle first. You just scroll all the way down to the bottom and here's your new bullet casing effects variable. Set the uh, particle effect that you want, which I put mine here. And then you need to go to your third person character, which is inside of characters, base character, third person character. All right, now we need to make a new variable. So let's scroll down here to variables. Click the button right here for add a variable. Name it bullet casing effects and change the variable type to particle system. And now that you got that, we need to set it inside the function called set active weapon variables right here. Double click it. And now you just simply drag this new variable into the scene and hit set. Put it right here and then connect it up to this, the end of this. And to easily set this, since it's such a long thing, hold down shift and double click this right there and it'll turn blue. And then you can scroll all the way back up, hold shift and double click this, and it'll connect the wire for you instantly instead of having to manually drag the wire all the way down. Alright, so now that you have that, now we need to go and decide where you want this particle effect to play. So if you're using weapon blueprints, you need to go to the weapons folder, weapon blueprints, parent weapon BP, and what I did is you click on weapon mesh, add a component, and then just add an arrow. So I click arrow here. I named it bullet casing effects. And I scale, I changed it to green and I made the size 0.3 so it's not such a big arrow. Now that's where the effect is going to play. But this is only for the parent, so you don't need to adjust this yet. You just need to have this set up. So there you go, you have that set, save. Now you can open up, say, your uh, laser weapon blueprint. And this is what it will look like out of the gate. It will look like this. So all you have to do is you just click the bullet casing effects. You can move it wherever you want your um, bullet casing effects to play. I'm going to rotate it like this. And there you go. And you can do this on each individual blue weapon blueprint. So they'll be, they can play in different places based on each blueprint. There we go. Got that. And if you're not using weapon blueprints, you're just using, say, a normal weapon, uh, like a skeletal mesh which is what this one uses. You can scroll up to it. See, this is used the rifle standard. You can browse to it, open it up, go to the skeleton, and here's the gun. Now what I did is I clicked on the root and I added a right click and added a socket. And I named that socket bullet casing effects. And then I moved it over to here. You can rotate it, move it, Whichever way it's uh, rotated and set is where it'll fly out. So I got it set this way so the bullet will kind of fly out at an angle out of the right side. And make sure you name all of the sockets on your gun's bullet casing effects. That way you don't have to have a you don't have to set any special variables or anything. It'll just be all hard coded to bullet casing effects. I know people say hard coding is bad and it usually is, but in this case it's literally the same thing over and over. Why well, have a variable for it? I mean, if you want to, you can, but whatever. <laughs> I'll show you in a second. So when you come back to third person after you set up those uh, sockets, we need to go into the simulate fire function, which is right here in the third person character, simulate shooting. I said simulate fire. I meant simulate shooting. All right, so this is where it... This is what it looks like, and this is where we're going to play our effect. So right here is where it checks for if it's a weapon blueprint or not. So at the end, after the play sound, we're just going to spawn emitter at location. 
we're going to drag in our new bullet casing effect here, connect it as the actual emitter, and then we're going to get this uh, variable called current weapon BP reference, drag off and get the bullet casing effects, which is the, uh, the arrow that we created. You drag off of it and get the world transform, then you break the transform and then connect in the location and rotation. And that's for weapon blueprints, and we pretty much do the same thing down here off of this part for normal weapons. So you spawn emitter at location, we're going to use the same bullet casing effects, only this time you're going to take the weapon up here in the component, drag it into the scene, and then get the socket transform. And this is what I was saying, uh, if you name all of your sockets bullet casing effects, then you just type that name right here and it'll use this name for all of your weapons. And then you just do the same. You get the socket transform, you break it, connect it in, and then you are good to go. Now, that's for multiplayer. This will all work multiplayer replicated, so you'll see the bullets coming out of your gun and everyone else will see the bullets coming out of your gun. But let's say maybe you don't want that. Maybe you don't care about network or you want to save on bandwidth or something. You can do it locally, so only the person shooting the gun, only that player will see it. It only runs on his local computer. So to do that, you come to the primary fire and shoot um, event right here where it says primary attack pressed. Follow it over to the part right here where it says server increment shooting. And right before it is where we could do it, uh, we can do our logic. So basically what I would do is if you wanted to do this, I would come up to the, here on the left side, create a new function. I called mine uh, local bullet casing effects. Drag it in. Now you, you would drag it in right here. You would connect it up like this and make sure you just connect it back into there. And then inside you would just copy and paste the uh, pretty much the same logic that we just did. It would start off with is it a blueprint weapon or not, true or false. And if it is, you do exactly what we did before, where we spawn the emitter. If it's not, you spawn the emitter and play it at the uh, socket. And that's it. And then make sure you would connect this, and then you would want to disconnect uh, these right here. This one and this one. You disconnect that. And what that would do is it would play it only on the local player and not across the network, which... In this case, I don't really think it's going to be a performance bandwidth issue or anything, but you never know. Somebody may have to, uh, they may want it to only play on the player, so. And that should do it. I'm going to just put it back to where it works over the network, and I'll hop into the game real quick one more time and show you how it looks with, uh, say, dedicated server, two players. Hop in like this and this come over to each other you can see the bullets fly you can actually change the scale of them if you want the bullets to be big this is the default scale that they come with so. and there you go bullets flying on each one they're on the ground and that's it guys that's a quick tutorial um thanks for watching Make sure you uh, check out my other videos and tutorials, and uh, I'll see you later.